All right, so to put the cherry on top of our discussion on shear, uh, I want to go back a couple slides to talk about the capacity again, and then we're going to do this quick example, and I think you'll find it's really straightforward. Um, so like we said, um, let me go back uh, here. So uh, whenever you're looking at the capacity according to shear, and again, to be clear, the, the, the check is a little bit more involved if you're ever dealing with a situation where you need stiffened webs, where you have... Um, uh, tension field action or you're looking at plate girders, this can be much more involved. For a W shape, especially a W shape of 50 KSI steel, which is of course the most common, um, this check is really easy. So for a W section with 50 KSI steel, the first thing we have to do is we have to determine whether or not um, uh, our uh, fee value is 1 or 0.9. And for W sections of 50 KSI, most cases it's 1. Um, there are some instances where it's not um, uh, but there's only about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, sections. If you go to uh, the relevant section in the spec and particularly look at this, there are some user's notes here which are actually really, really valuable because um, they, they really walk you through it. So if you're looking at a W shape where uh, uh, you're trying to figure out where phi is one, I'm actually going to do the calc with you here in a bit. Um, but unless it's one of these shapes, phi should be 1. If it's, for instance, a W30 by 90, then phi should be 0.9. And you'll see that uh, uh, come to fruition here in a second. Now for the capacity, the capacity is 0.6 Fy times the area of the web, which is just D times TW. Uh, and then there is the, uh, the CV computation. CV, first off, CV is going to be 1 for all W shapes with 50 KSI steel. And you can actually refer to this user's note again at the bottom. And it says, for all ASTM, A6, W, M, S, and HP shapes, so for all W shapes except the ones listed here, and there are no W shapes listed, CV is 1. And again, what is CV? CV just reduces the capacity to account for the possibility of buckling. But with W shapes, the web is so stocky that buckling just doesn't really happen with W shapes of 50 KSI steel. So you never really need to worry about it. And we'll see how the math bears that out uh, in a second. Again, I'm going to try and walk you through the math so that you can kind of see this. But again, you'll see it's, uh, it's pretty simple. Um, what we're going to do is a brief example of uh, looking at a W24 by 62. I honestly just picked a random shape. I just wanted to show you how simple this calc is for most uh, uh, W shapes and really all W shapes. It's really easy. Um, what we're going to do is, is write down some properties. So I'm going to pull out my steel manual right here. Uh, and we're going to look up some properties for a W24 by 62. Now I'm going in section 1.1 in the, you know, the earlier part of the manual where all the W shape properties are. Uh, and we're going to look up for a uh, W24 by 62. Uh, and so this is on page 1-20, um, 1-21. So um, and that's in table 1-1. One what we're going to do is we're going to look up uh, a couple of properties and really what I need are three of them. Okay, I need the depth, which is uh, for a W21 by 62, it is uh, 20, uh, let me see, the depth is, or sorry, no, W24 by 62, sorry, sorry, so that page is wrong. Yeah, no, it's 1-18 to 1-19. I, th I thought something was wrong there. That's that's what it was. I was looking at a W21 by 62. Sorry about that. So this is 1-18 to 1-19. So the W24 by 62 has a depth of 23.7 inches. It has a web thickness of 0 0.43 inches. And we're also going to need a ratio, and we've actually not paid attention to these ratios. We're going to talk about this in our last lecture on Wednesday before our exam review. We need this H over TW. And H over TW, first off, you can see it is 50.1. Um, let me pull up my webcam uh, footage so that I can make that a little bigger. So what's going on is I'm looking at the W shape section right here. And so I'm on the W24 by 62, which is... Uh, see there we go right there 
Um, and so here's the properties. But if you look on the next page, I want you to look at this top part right here where it says compact section criteria. Uh, and there's these two slenderness ratios. There's one related to the flanges. It says BF over 2TF and one is H over TW. These are slenderness ratios for the flange and the web, respectively. And this, um, we'll talk about this later uh, in our next lecture, but this will uh, help tell us whether or not the section is going to be governed by local uh, buckling instead of global buckling. So if we go back to our uh, example, you know, we've got uh, 50.1. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to determine our fee value. So um, I guess we'll call it step one. Step one, oh, uh, determine um, fee. And so the way that we determine fee is the first thing that we do is we compute 2.24 square root of E over Fy. Basically what we're doing is we're computing this value, which is a, a, a check on our web slenderness. So that ends up being um, 2.24 times the square root of 29,000 KSI over 50 KSI. And when you chug that out, you end up getting a value of about 53.9. And what you do is you compare that to your H over TW. And so the idea is that if H over TW is less than or equal to 2.24, sorry, 2.24, square root of E over Fy, then phi is 1. And so again, as I said, um, with W sections, the webs are really stocky. And so this H over TW sort of measures how stocky the webs are. W sections, just by their very nature, tend to contain really stocky elements, stocky flanges and stocky um, webs. I'm using this term stocky, but really the, the, the technical term, and we'll talk about this uh, in our next lecture, is that we would consider these compact or non-slender, uh, and, and, and we'll, we'll discuss that uh, during our next lecture. And so if your web is sufficiently compact, then the fee value is one. And if you remember, there's only eight sections where that wouldn't be the case. If you go back, this is the section where you're looking at fee, and there's only eight sections, and they actually list the sections out for you. It's really beneficial. Here are the sections. And you can see one of the ones that's not listed is a W24 by 62. And um, if you look, this is a W2462, so fee is one. So pretty simple. So um, from that, we need to determine our, um, uh, so, oh, I'm making mistakes. Bear with me. So the next thing we need to do is determine CV or CV1. The reason why there's a CV1 is because there's also a CV2 related to another phenomenon uh, in the spec called tension field action, but that's a that's another story for another day. And that's something that's really only applicable to plate girder sections. Um, first off, to be clear, for all W shapes of 50 KSI, this value is 1. But if you want to actually go through the motions of checking it, what you do is you, uh, you well, first off, let me open my spec to make sure I get the formula. Uh, correct. I believe it's 1.10 uh, EKV over FY. Um, I think it might write it in, in a different order. It might do K times E, but I, I don't think that really matters all that much. But what you're doing is you're checking your, again, you're checking your cylinders. Yeah, I'd write it the other order. Yeah. So I'll, I'll write it in the order that the spec lists, even though it doesn't matter. Um, but what you're doing is you're checking your, uh, how slender your web is to see about the potentiality of buckling. And so you compare it against this 1.1 times the square root of E over F uh, Y limit. There's this K term that pops in. And so what that K is, is it accounts for the presence of stiffeners, of, of shear stiffeners. And if you don't have any uh, stiffeners, you just take a constant value. And that value is 5.34 according to the specs. So I'll, I'll put the page number over here. Uh, in the spec so that you can sort of follow along. This is on page 16.1-71, uh, this part about CV. But uh, if you follow along, you get one point, oh, uh, I used my highlighter there, I meant to use my pen. Um, there we go. 1.1 times the square root 
of 29,000 KSI, uh, 50 KSI, and then 5.34 under the square root. If you chug that out, I didn't even bother doing it because I knew this value was going to be one, um, but 1.1 1 .1 times the square root of 29,000 divided by 50 times 5.34, uh, you get 61.22. And again, that is much less than H over TW. Uh, so what I will do is write out specific, ooh, I erased all my text, oh, whoops. So we'll just have to redo that really quickly. So hold on, let's see where we were at. So where we left off, oh, whoops. So D is 23.7 inches. TW is 0 0.430 inches. I tried the undo button and it didn't work. Uh, H over TW was 50.1. And so for step one, we found that phi V is one. And step two, this is where we were, what we were doing. Uh, we did 1.10 times the square root of KV times E over FY. And that ended up being 61.2. And so the idea is that if H over TW is less than or equal to that, then CV is one. So CV is one, phi is one. So all you have to do to compute your capacity is phi Vn is phi times 0 0.6 Fy area of the web times Cv, which is 1 times 0 0.6 times 50 KSI. And then the area of the web, this is just D times Tw. It's just the, the depth times the thickness. That's it. So this is 23.7 inches. I put another zero there that I wasn't supposed to. Uh, 0 0.43 and then times one. And so if you multiply all that together, one times six times 50 times 23.7 times 43 or 0 0.43 times one, you get 305.73 kips. And what does the spec list? Here's that. And the spec lists that, 306. So that's where they get the value. All they're doing essentially is they're taking 0 0.6 times FY times the area of the web. Um, the only question is your fee value. And there's a couple sections where fee is 0.9, but for most sections, fee is one. And for all sections that are FY is 50 KSI, CV is one. There are no W shapes in the manual that have a phi V value or have a have an H over T, uh, TW value that's bigger than that. None of them do. So that's why CV is always one. So that's it. Um, pretty straightforward uh, calculation. Um, and again, sort of put it off at the end because shear never really matters for, for building uh, members uh, all that much. Again, W sections just have a uh, phenomenal capacity. You know, if you're ever dealing with a transfer girder or something like that, maybe you really need to look at it. Uh, anytime you have a really short beam that has a lot of load on it, you might need to look at it. Uh, but more often than not, ends up not being a concern for most floor beams and, and roof beams and, and building systems. And that's it. So that's all I have. I will see you all on Wednesday.